All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to the second video of the Paneling Tools introduction. And this file should be called uh, PT Examples 02, right? It's a much smaller file. Um, some stuff is hidden, but uh, these are a little bit more complicated um, examples. So um, you'll have to kind of actually follow a little bit more uh, precisely. Okay. First off, you'll see um, I have a surface here, very simple, that uh, I created by lofting basically these two top and bottom curves. Okay, so that's pretty simple. And then I made a uh, paneling grid out of that just by using the normal PT panel grid command, right, that we saw uh, in the last video. Okay, now you'll see um, this actually is uh, going to be. Um, a sort of variable grid, as you can see, custom variable, that I am going to control uh, the size of the circles based off of a curve. Now, this curve is actually drawn on the surface, and so uh, the command we're going to use for that is called uh, interp curve on surface. So let's try that. Interpolate curve on surface. Select surface to draw curve on, so you select that surface. And then you start on the curve. And I suggest that you just sort of start on one side and go to the other. And if it snaps to points, that's fine, right? Uh, just don't try to double back. And so you can kind of go around. And you'll see that depending on how you click, like it might do really weird things, right? But you know, just sort of try. And it may, might take you, you know, a couple of tries to kind of get the sort of technique down, right? Because you'll it'll do stuff like that. Um, if you find the sort of points for this, uh, if the snapping of the points gets you know really really um, distracting, you can turn off your point snap here in the uh, no snaps. Let's try that again. And that might actually get it make it a little bit easier. Um, All right, so you can draw whatever sort of line or lines you want. Um, this is by no means you know, accurate. So if you're looking for accuracy, you'll need to put down some anchor points to actually snap onto. But this is just to have something to work with. All right. OK, so then um, you'll see that I've drawn here a circle with a point in the middle. Okay, so these are just like elements that we'll have to eventually use uh, for this command. And uh, let's start it. PT panel, uh, grid custom variable. Okay, so it asks me to select the paneling points grid, which is this guy. Enter, base surface, back, enter. Uh, I don't enter, actually it just automatically jumps you to this uh, and where you're sort of looking at these options, right? Okay, so ignore all of these at first. Uh, let's look at pattern method. You'll see that there's actually a lot of different um, ways of doing the patterns. You can rotate them, you can move them, blah, blah. Uh, I'm going to go with the scale. And distribution method based off of curvature, mean verb, point attractors, curve attractors, vector, bitmap, blah, blah, blah. Right? These are all doable things. Uh, I'm going to go with curve attractors. Since we have a curve, uh, pull curve now group, yes, okay. And set enter. Select attractor curves, which is this curve that I just drew. Enter. Select unit pattern curves and points, and that's actually just the circle that's on the ground here. Okay. Enter. So objects define the bounding box of a unit pattern, which is basically this, right? How big is one unit? Um, or enter to use the bounding box of input pattern. So we can just enter and automatically use the bounding box of you know whatever we input. And then uh, origin point. So the origin point for the scaling, right? So in our case, we want it to be in the middle, not off to the side. So that's why I put a point in here uh, in advance. So that's the origin point for our scaling operation. Now it asks me for a minimum scale factor. 
0 0.1 as the smallest. That's sort of, I don't know if that's the default, but you know, for now, 0 0.1, and then maximum 0 0.9, okay? And you'll see what happens is that the further away from the line it goes, it'll scale it down to 0 0.1 as the minimum, right? And the closest it is, it'll scale it up to 0 0.9 of that sort of full unit or full circle. So none of these will actually touch. Like if you did 1.0, then some of these will actually overlap and touch, right? Um, but basically that's what it does. It sort of reacts to uh, your sort of curve input, okay? Now, that, as you can see, that was sort of a very multi-step intricate process, but to kind of get it set up correctly, you know, it might take you a couple of tries, but, you know, just sort of follow that step by step. Look at what the sort of Rhino dialog box is asking you for, and um, you'll be able to get it correctly. All right. It's pretty cool. Let's move on to the next one. All right. So this one is more or less the same. Uh, command except I have designated an attractor here and also I said plus history uh, so which means that actually this is a command that can be run with history on okay so let's try that uh, I'm gonna click on the record history button here on the lower part of my screen and run PT oops panel grid custom variable okay Select the points grid, enter, select the base surface, and here uh, we'll keep our pattern method as scale, but our distribution method here, uh, instead of curve attractors, we're going to use point attractors. Okay? And then enter. So select attractor points, which is this guy, enter. Select unit pattern curves and points, this guy, enter. Uh, enter to use the bounding box, origin point, which is this, scale factor 0 0.1, 0 0.9, okay, All right? So I did that with the record history on. So you'll see that now, basically, the further away from this point these circles are, uh, the smaller they are. And so when I start moving this, you'll see that these circles update now, right? Because I had the history command on when I executed this command. So this is sort of already kind of pseudo, right? Getting into uh, grasshopper territory where things are live and these sort of patterns react. And so you can actually kind of play around with this a little bit, right? But this is still reacting to the attractor point. Okay, so the further away I get, you know, the smaller away, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can kind of actually use this to adjust your apertures, if you will. It's probably a more noticeable when it's at a moderate distance. Uh, so you kind of get a full range of the gradient from like fully open to fully closed here. All right? Okay. So this is just uh, you can take both the surface and this group, copy it to the back here. So use the split command, select objects to split, which is the surface, and then the cutting objects, which is all these. It'll take a moment for it to think, but eventually, basically, then you can generate this sort of perforated screen off of that. Okay. So that's attractors plus history, but you have to make sure you have the record history button on and you don't break the history afterwards. Okay, so let's try that. PT pattern grid panel grid custom variable. Select the pattern pinpoints grid here, enter, base surface. Uh, pattern method is mean, right? So let's change that to mean. Distribution method still point attractors, enter. So attractor points uh, one and two, All right? Enter. Start pattern, which is the circle. Enter. Bounding box, yes. Enter. End pattern, which is the triangle. Enter. Bounding box. Enter. Okay. 
So look at that. So it's basically morphing from the circle to uh, the triangle uh, based on the attractor, right? And actually when I just did that, I didn't have the record history on, so you probably won't see it as well. So uh, let me go just sort of fast forward and do that. So let's see uh, what happens when you start moving these around. It gets rounder the more this sort of second attractor gets closer to it and changes more to the sort of red triangles when you get further away. Right, so the closer uh, the closer to the attractor they are, the more circular they are to this one. And the further they are, then the more sort of triangular they are. So you can actually imagine, you can do some sort of pretty neat uh, sort of blend shapes in between these, uh, where basically, you know, the pattern goes from one shape to another. All right, that's with the history on too. Okay. So that was the uh, PT panel grid custom variable and the sort of two one of the two of the many actually variations that it has and you'll see that there's actually a lot of other stuff you can do with it. Um, you'll see all of those documented in uh, the paneling tools uh, manual and uh, I won't necessarily go through each and every one of them one by one but just kind of show you some of the representative ones. Okay. So um, we've seen this before, uh, the PT Panel 3D Custom, where you basically you know, make one of these and do the panel grid offset and to kind of morph it and fit it into a surface like that. Right? And these are all based off of the same component, right? And they will change or they will sort of stretch to fit the sort of boundary of your each uh, panel cell, if you will. Now. There's a different version here, which is uh, actually easy to understand if we do it on a flat rectangular surface like this. So this is uh, basically, I'm taking those and making different versions of it, going from large, medium, you know, small, smaller, right? And these are all basically patch surfaces with slightly different geometries, okay? Now, uh, this is the PT Panel 3D Custom uh, variable, okay? So, which means that I can actually sort of switch in between these. So PT offset points, uh, select these, distance three, enter, base surface, okay. So that's right, going off in one direction, okay. So let's do the command PT Panel 3D custom variable, select the first bounding grid, which is the inside one, enter, second grounding grid, outside one, enter, enter to accept option. So uh, in this pattern method, we'll do essentially uh, the list here, okay? Uh, distribution method, still point attractors, okay? And um, actually, let me turn on the history for that. All right, pattern method list, distribution method point attractors, group yes. Enter, select attractor points, there's one here. Enter, select module one, which is this guy. Enter, enter, module two, enter, enter, module 3, enter, enter, and then module 4, enter, enter, and then press enter, done, and it'll think for a little while, but you'll see that basically, instead of being a mean gradient, right, because these are all, these are all the same size, um, units, right? These are all identical because they're based off the same rectangular surface, right? Uh, it'll depend on how things fit as well. But in this case, uh, the attractor, what's closest to the attractor point here, uh, is going to be this 
unit, and what's furthest from the attracted point is going to be this unit, and everything else in between, right? So instead of being graded, it's actually just sort of swapping units out based on their distance, right? And actually, let's see if I move this. So I guess this one doesn't necessarily work with history. It's probably too um, hard to update. But you kind of get a sense of, you know, what's ever closer to the attractor point is on this side. What's further from the attractor point there and there sort of further away is this. And you can have as many sort of in-between steps as you want, right? So instead of four, you can have five or six or just three if you wanted to. And that's the sort of list version of this. Okay, all right. So that's, we're done with the complicated commands here. Um, here are just some sort of more tool related commands that are just good to know. Now, as you know, uh, so sometimes Rhino curves have directions, right? So if I type direction, you'll see, okay, this curve's going to the right, this one to the left, the right, the left, right? And um, you can sort of click on it to flip these curves, right? Which is easy enough, unless you have a lot of them, right? If you have like 50 of them, it's really tedious to kind of go through and click them all one by one, right? Um, so just in case you have a situation like this, where you have curves going in different directions, this command, PT unify curve direction, basically puts them all in one single direction. And so if I look at it, well, they're all unified. So if I want to flip them all together at once, then I could just type flip or flip all, right? And that will change the directions as a whole, right? But basically this unifies the directions of the curves. And that's what you should get here. Okay, so by the same sort of uh, method, basically, uh, PT Unify Faces Direction, you can select the faces you want to unify, enter, select the base first surface to kind of unify off of, so it would basically, every, all the surfaces would basically be this, same as this, okay? So let's look really quick. So that made them all shoot, uh, at least in this case, for the most part, shoot inwards. And if we flip ball, then they all go outwards. Okay, so let's offset. All right, but that's just, you know, something that might be useful in some cases. Okay, PT mean curves, which is kind of cool. It's a, a version of contouring, I guess. Mean curves. So the start curve and an end curve. And then method is number, how many curves, let's say, let's say 10. And um, enter. And basically it takes that and morphs it or matches it to from the beginning to the end. And that's it. And you can copy the result basically sort of up to the top if you want. PT mean surfaces uh, is the same basic idea. Uh, mean surfaces. So there's a start surface and there's an end surface. Uh, how many you want? So still 10. Number of surfaces, method. You can do distance or, you know, Distance, distance factor, blah, blah, blah. There's different sort of methods. Um, but let's stick with number. And it basically creates a blended average of your start and end as well. Right? Pretty cool. Okay. And uh, that's more or less it for this video. Um, this is kind of show you going over the PT panel grid custom variable, the sort of different options. And these are not all the options, there's still a lot, right? Um, and the 3D custom variable that uh, has the sort of stepping method uh, or the list method uh, that you can use. All right, see you guys in the next one.